so good. T- Tim is the fandom romper character ever. For real? Yeah. What about how? <laughs> <laughs> how, yes. They're a two-for-one package deal. Yeah. Oh, see, that's, I'm just sitting here like, you know what? You know what those, those Fumos, like that, that, like those type of plushies? Yeah. I'm just imagining a Cobra Commander as one of those, just spinning around. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's just spinning in your head. Yeah, like like he's in a microwave. Yes. All right, so I'm going to like stream the presentation now. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do this. Um, I'm recording this so I can post this to YouTube so that like normal people can understand the season one more too. Are you dudes ready? Normal people. People who, people who weren't in Fandom Rampus. Fandom Rampa at season one. <laughs> yes. All right. So, Fandom Rampa one, uh, Tower of Despair. If you guys have any questions, literally just ask. Okay. You can see the you can see the presentation, right? I can see it now. Yes. All right. So we're starting with the prologue. Um. And yeah, it, it's a it's a Danganronpa roleplay. I don't know what you expected. Uh, Bree and I kind of sucked at doing roleplay, so everyone woke up in the same. room. Though, Eggman. And this is our pro tag for this season. Uh, Jolde Kujo. She is a pretty good pro tag. Um, uh, considering we had to make people register for the roles in that season for some reason, because I'm stupid like that. Um, yeah, they get their funny little pink pad devices, they get assigned their rooms and junk. This is like the only season where people were like able to like pick what rooms they went into, so that was cool. Uh, and then stuff happens. Um, this is the Headmaster Crunchy. <laughs> um, basically, Brie wanted to do this trend where every season we made people, like, have some sort of involvement with the existence of the Headmaster, and in this season it was naming the Headmaster, because, you know, the Headmaster is an anime base, so, like, obviously people would need to name it. Um, but we did it per character instead of per person. So people had to ant- make basically fill in a name that was like an in-character option. Uh, so Glamrock Freddy named Crunchy. <laughs> yeah. and, and basically Crunchy's whole motive is that since they're an anime base, they want to become a character. So they learn uh, the characters' personalities and stuff based off of like how, how they do in the killing game, and Crunchy base their personality off of that. Uh, since the characters are all alive, though, Crunchy can't mimic any of them, so Crunchy just wears masks of like all different characters during the time that they're alive. Who the point of the mask is? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Point of the mask is. So yeah, Crunchy explains the killing game. And the location of the killing game. Basically, it's literally a tower of despair in Utah. Uh, and Crunchy is also shown to literally be like r- kind of overpowered right off the bat, as like an anime base would probably be, because there's none of that power scaling already. Uh, so Crunchy meets mm-hmm. up a twink. You can guess whose twink it is. There's only one person at the server who role plays twinks so consistently. Um, <laughs> yeah. And- yeah, and basically, the, like it sets the it sets the stage for like this whole like plot around the fourth wall and junk like that. Uh, not only are they told that they're stuck here to forever, they they've got they're basically told that they have to like put their entire lives on their stupid little pink tablets because uh, they're like I like I mentioned before, they are literally only going to get four meals this entire season, and it's all from being ordered on those tablets. Um, after this is the motive and shit. So, it's chapter one, uh, in which two arguments happen and a completely unimportant character dies. You'll understand what I mean. <laughs> Let me guess, it's important because they didn't do anything and the, and the, and the first one was inactive. Is that, is that it? Exactly. <laughs> so here's the cast. I'm so smart. Can I hear some predictions? Hmm, uh... That not that that one guy next to the the, the Amori character is dying. The Amori character is not the one in the bottom left. He is not living. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Um. 
All right. Let's go then. So the motive is a pretty cool motive because Brie was going through science science class and stuff when we were doing this. So like this motive is like technically the most accurate like real life based motive we'll have this entire role play. But the air pressure in the room was being like increased and in junk like that. Um, so basically everyone was slowly being crushed like tin cans. Uh, and with the and like obviously like the character arc start like, and all that. This is the only chapter where Mike is at, uh, uh, active. You see, you see this guy speaking without quotes and anything like that. <laughs> That's Mike. He stops oh existing. Oh my god! <laughs> Again, Mike Gurney. <laughs> Mike laughed in solos, I guess. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Don't say that. Me. <laughs> so yeah, I can. <laughs> So yeah, freaking like homophobia happens or whatever. Um, <laughs> or <laughs> they whatever. are literally a fights Vax because Vax is gay. <laughs> that is literally what happened. <laughs> isn't B R gay? Isn't BR gay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's called it's called being uh, bullied by your brothers your entire goddamn life. It's called a trauma or something like that. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I all this solely uh, so I could introduce the season's blood color because I like hurting characters. Um, and here's the ant tag, <laughs> the whore. <laughs> <laughs> He, he he is not active. He he looks he seems active, and with the way that we talk about him in Phantom Rumpa, he sounds important. But for most of season one, he like is gone. He is radio silent. <laughs> this is the la this is why this is the only season where you sign up to be protagonist. Antag. Yeah, we got we got just egg man. He was way powerful, and he was a house. That's how it went Yeah. Alright, so uh, the first thing that happens is Eggman creates the sex device and connects it to Freddy to try and to try and communicate with the outside world. But it doesn't work and what it does do is that it gives the like Freddy like the ability to like experience pain and stuff like that. Um <laughs> the, the, sex <laughs> the sex device. <laughs> the the super <laughs> signal enhancing xenotechnology. With it hooked up to you, the sex should get you going with something in no time. Oh, oh, oh my brilliant surprises me even at any times. I am fucking amazing. <laughs> I am. I love him. <laughs> it was fun. I like Eggman. Um. <laughs> the sex! <laughs> it occurs to me I shouldn't be shouting that since my dad is, in fact, downstairs. That's okay, but yeah, while this is happening, VR and Freddy are- <laughs> VR is teaching Freddy to be homophobic. <laughs> 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 He's literally- I, I don't even- he is literally telling him to be homophobic. <laughs> Just look at this Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> they do sex. Horrified. They do sex. What is sex? It's when they get closer. <laughs> 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 what is that? What is Gregory, what is this sex? <laughs> this is canon. This canonically happened. It was canonically acknowledged as an event that happened. It wasn't even a was it? <laughs> um, yeah, and here's the first death, which is actually a mode of death. Basically, the elevator, as Aubrey's, like, going upstairs to, like, get to the other group because she's going to go yell at Kel for eating her waffles, she dies. <laughs> so, yes, she dies. She is literally the first character to die. Um, And her death is literally on screen right now, so you can read her, like, being horrifically, like, crushed to death in an elevator if you want. it. Jesus. She deserved it. She was inactive. <laughs> Dang. Did you know it was originally supposed to be Kel and VR was supposed to, uh, you know, die later? 
Fair. Well, I'll not live, I guess. The, the casket split in half. Um, some some generic role play stuff happens that isn't very important, and it basically causes like this interesting shift in the alibis. So then, when this happens, <laughs> people have like an interesting um alibi situation going on. Mm. Not though, I guess. Yeah. There goes Nagito. Fuck it. Uh, I can't it. He deserved it. I don't know what he did, but he deserved yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. We That's did what no idea. dang and ruffle roleplay has done. Right. We killed Nagato. Kill yes. Hashtag no Nagato. And there's a YouTube link here at Kuka Labs. Uh, freaking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that's so next they figure out who the killer was. It's Clementine from The Walking Dead. She literally yeah, did it because no. Nagito was a weirdo. She killed him because she because he was a creepy bastard. <laughs> that's the correct thing to do. She she did us all a favor. Yeah. Thank you, Clementine. Clementine, Thank you, Clementine I think is the, the most dead. respected killer in this entire series. <laughs> and she... Like, she is literally based, okay? I You will never get as based she... as Clementine does because yeah. I banned registering Ken and Danganronpa characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Alright, so now we're in chapter two, uh, in which Eggman acts like a shithead and it is never active again. This is the last chapter that Eggman does anything. <laughs> Joe and Tag. Yes. So here's the current cast. Any new predictions? Hmm, I still don't I I, I think I don't I know I don't think that uh I, I I don't think that that guy who is next to the bald one is going to be lasting much longer. The bald uh, one Snib- next to Nagi. Snibbly. 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 Why y'all think I'm him? Why y'all think I'm him? <laughs> the booger. <I> the <laughs> booger. You sound so mean to him. Booger. Why y'all think I'm full Snibbly? What do y'all do to you? Are we ready? Yes. I'm ready. All right, so this motive, the drugs is, like, put in, like, the food and the water and everything, like, I'm talking, and they're so high that the protag literally is able to talk to the narrators. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, she's fucking (laughs) zong. She is done for. I'm high as motherfucking (laughs) food. So, like, and this is, like, literally, like, we got the pool and stuff, but I didn't get to do the pool episode thing, because Eggman pulls up with a device, and he literally locks Freddy's joints. <laughs> I was like, no! I was like, no! Uh, what, 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 what did Freddy do to deserve this? Freddy has done nothing wrong. I know, Fre- well, he was, like, homophobic for, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> so, 30 <laughs> whole seconds. <laughs> um, so, yeah, VR and Max fight, but, like, nothing happens, but, like, Max gets a nosebleed out of nowhere, and, like, Sam and Freddy start yelling at each other over <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, We had Monokuma <laughs> Yeah, we had like Monokuma theater, so like every trial we would reveal some like random stuff from like a character's backstory. Like in chapter one, like a couple of like clips were shown of like characters like before the killing game. Like one of the clips was literally like Mike recording a TikTok while Freddie Fazbear like watched in horror from like <laughs> from a <laughs> <laughs> and then another one, and then another one was like a VR, like a during prom night, making out with a dude in like a closet, and his brother recording it. He's like, "Yo, what the fuck?" <laughs> so now, so now, Freddy oh, thinks the VR is. Gay. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Whoa, he's homosexual. I didn't know that. You. <laughs> Gregory, I'm seeing this gay ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like one of like two interactions that Isidore has this season with the Peach. Uh, here's a fun fact for Snivydor fans is that Isidore, I originally wanted to hint at being shipped with Peach before like the whole like Peach Polycule thing got like canon and shit like that. So... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen, and I'm glad it did it because, like, the, the 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 polycule could happen again with season seven, and now Snivydor is a thing. <laughs> Lips. Yeah. So I, then, then like, there's like this interaction on like the second floor with the medical room, where like she's like talking to like the the, the main pro tag gang and stuff like that. The pro tag and her dad's um, gang. Yeah. And but then they hear like noises in the wall, like some sort of rumbling. Um, and basically, yeah. Kel dies from insects crawling out of the shower and like crawling inside of him and stuff like that. Jesus! Holy shit! Yep. Um, honestly, he deserves it for being an Amori character. But that's the second random death of the series. Honestly, to be honest, well, what is the thing with Amori? What is, like, the thing? <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. But, yeah. Um, Kel died, and it was kind of horrific. But, like, this, like, addressed that the bugs were dangerous. Um, and, you know, the room goes dysfunctional, because, you know, the Kel, the Kel room is now bug room. <laughs> bugs! There's bugs. Well. Um, later, uh, Snibley and Isidore have a racism off. <laughs> I don't even have words for this. I think, I think their hatred for each other is so funny. There's just... <laughs> they're just mutually racist, and it's really funny to me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the original Phantom Rump of Racism before Annie even was a twinkle in, in Blade's eye. Yeah, literally, no joke, and they did it better. IMO. Because <laughs> they were funny. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, Jone, you know, freaking, you know, starts tripping out really bad, so she runs into the me medical room and she finds Edward. Alphonse's big brother by one year is found dead. Granted, the vision is like tinted pink because she's tripping so bad, but that's still his body. <laughs> well, I'm tripping balls. I've seen humans dead. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. How did, that, how did he die? Oh, you're about to find out. Um, so, it, Isidore killed him. Basically, um, she took these poisonous bugs, and you know how I, like, mentioned the color water earlier? She, like, crushed the bugs into the water bottle to, like, change the water color from purple to black, and then she took the label off of the water so that, like, everyone just assumed it was, like, black-colored water. Uh, and then she gave it to him. And, you know, since there's, like, the colored water already addressed from, like, the first floor, he didn't suspect it was poison or anything, because black water is literally a thing that's available. But they found out that it wasn't black water and it was poisoned by blood bugs thanks to the smell of it and also because like no black waters have actually been bought from the vending machine. So yeah, <laughs> Isidore dies. <laughs> uh -huh. Isidore. Sad. What the fuck? So yeah, that's her execution, and I totally did it like I totally didn't leave an opening for a pro tag scar for season seven. No, no, no. This is not coming back to us. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so now we're in chapter three, heart storming. Uh, th this started like an interesting trend for Phantom Rampa. Um, where, and you'll see what I mean. I don't just mean chapter length and stuff like that, but like character arcs almost always like come to like their like climax in chapter three. It's kind of crazy. Um, thus, the name of the chapter title isn't only the motive, but also because of all the jump that happens in it. Um, so here's the current cast. 
What are the predictions? Mm, I know I was right about. <laughs> I think Julia's gonna die, guys. I think she's dead, guys. <laughs> All right. Um. Moving on. We got the motive, <laughs> as Kuka calls it, the Florida motive, because the tower literally starts flooding. Um. Oh my god. Like, at this point, we have, like, five floors in the tower, so at least there's, like, some time before, like, jump gets really bad or whatever. Um, and, um, Alphonse, you know, finally his traitor duties come into action. The, the, the tr traitor twist this season is interesting. Because, you see, Alphonse doesn't know he's the traitor. It's essentially like a plugging a chip into someone's neck while they're asleep. That's, like, the type of traitor that he is. Um, but since he's the traitor, he gets uh, special privileges to look into, like, secret rooms and stuff like that. Um, and it's called the Archive. And in the Archive of Season 1, it's basically this, like, this room that is designed specifically to solely to shatter the fourth wall. Uh, think of it like the Mastermind's room, but magical and stuff like that. So, you know, it's like the AU backstories. It's like role players talking about the characters, concept art, character designs. Um, basically, everything you could expect to be related with an RP server is shown in character, like in this um, this freaking chat. Um, Interesting. Yeah, he gets out, but like he encounters VR in the hallway, and he has to lie about having access to the key the, to the room. I don't actually know why he does this, why he lies to VR, but it allows like this like interaction to happen with VR and Crunchy, where like he tries to get the key from Crunchy because he doesn't know that Crunchy has the key to the archives. Like, so like when he tries to get the key from them, not knowing you know that they don't have the key. Uh, it counts as a rule break because he basically attacked them. So Crunchy melts VR's R. <laughs> literally, literally hits him with the "Don't care, didn't ask." Besides, you're a gay man, and I, it was fun. Um. So yeah, you really do having twigs. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Is that the only reason? Is that the reason why Tim is the way he is? And Tim is the way he is because I, I was originally planning on killing him this chapter. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, but freaking, like, so yeah, VR arm, his arm is gone, and the power glove he's wearing gets turned into a prosthetic. <laughs> and so, yeah, they have to deal with that. And afterwards. You have to do that. Get in. Huh? Huh? Okay, anyways. Uh, so while that's going on, Jolene and Crepe are in the storage room and they're figuring out some, like, more right. junk. <laughs> Dead and me. Yeah, so they literally find out that the headmaster has a father figure. <laughs> there are people behind okay. me. Is that the guy? Yeah. Is that the Ikea? Yeah, that is the, the Ikea, Ikea guy. guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> the wait, hello? What's my mic on? Is is my mic on? Oh yes, it yeah, is. Your mic is on. Um, yay! Yeah. Yeah. The head mercer is more father figures than most dream stones. Like Crunchy has a more stable family than like most people in Phantom Alpha do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And he's the the man. list of healthy family bonds goes as follows: Purplelicious, Foofy, and their son, Crunchy, and their dad. And Sonic and his five dads. <laughs> his five dads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever Enderman Morphin Club have going on, slash J. Yeah. But yeah, so like, Jone takes this photo of Crunchy and like runs off. Uh, and she encounters Sam and Max, uh, Alphonse, and VR in the middle of the room. She finds out about what happens to him, so now she's like, doesn't want to have the photo. So, like, this is where, like, three arcs, like, split off afterwards. Like, Crave, who's still in the storage room, finds self aware spiders, so, like, the insect problem in Phantom Rampa 1 is basically gonna be gone, because the spiders, like, eat the poisonous bugs. 
and like they're self-aware, right? So they can actually like experience like emotions and stuff for the characters. Um, as for like Max and Jolne, like she gives him the photo, um, not because like she wanted to, but because he literally offered to to like make her like be less afraid of Crunchy, and because like he's like, oh yeah, since I haven't pissed off Crunchy or anything like that, then they're probably not gonna like not be as mad as me as they would be at like you were VR. Um, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. And, and as for VR, are you guys ready? I'm ready. <laughs> they kiss. They do. They do the thing. <laughs> they do the thing, guys. Oh my god. Oh, come on, man. Let me talk about it. Let me wait for. Oh. Literally, Flamvior, for real. Yeah, that I, that's basically what happens with them. Um, it's not it's not fun forever though. Afterwards, freaking like when like they head to the hallway and like Sam and Max are like messing with like a camera because they want to like see if they can like figure out where they're being surveilled from. And Crunchy comes in and is like, "Hey, stop messing with my cameras and stuff like that." But freaking like Max is like, "No, shut the hell up!" And Crunchy's like. Yeah, it was Lizio. Yeah, Crunchy has the... What? Yeah, like, Crunchy, like, is, like, it, like, finds out about the photo thing. What? Yeah, a freaking photo. Whatever. So Max dies. Because Max, like, was being annoying about the photo, so Crunchy literally snapped his neck. <laughs> Max. He deserves it for being gay. <laughs> Set out. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and and the gay people don't rest from there. Because, like, VR, like, at this point is, like, retrieving light blankets from, like, the lower floors before, like, they all flood so that he can get, like, jump for the characters to sleep on when, like, the floors, like, start, like, become unusable. And Freddy is helping him. But Freddy falls down the staircase into the water. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. And, like, and there's, like, this fake-out moment where, like, you think Freddy's gonna die, but it's revealed that the killing game actually made him waterproof. Um, <laughs> so, oh like, God. basically, the twink almost lost his uh, his boyfriend, but he didn't. Uh, yippee. Or Yay. <laughs> For good note. Um... So, like, Wendy, like, hosts a sleepover party because she wants the group to, like, be able to calm down, get, like, a icebreaker done in order for, like, the cast to, like, know each other better and stop, like, trying to kill each other. Um, but freaking like, Snively and Alphonse disappear. And so, like, they start looking for Snively and Alphonse. And Eggman's in the casino and he's like, ha ha, the rabbit is dead! And then Vera is like, Dude, you're smoking the cigar backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, then they like head into like the dedicated smoking room in the casino and bada bing, bada boom, the worst drawing in the game. I need to like, I'm gonna draw this to my own art style and with the actual <laughs> Mike Phantom of the design because I'm awesome like that. Unlike the person who we shall not name, who we drew this. Anyways, um, so Mike is dead, and the group starts looking for evidence. Um, and like while they're looking around, Jolie sees Wendy, and she's like folding up the carpet, like in the room, like trying to like move it and stuff. And Jolie's like, "Oh, here, let me help you." So she lifts up the carpet, and like the floor on this hallway is glass, so they can see from the top, from the floor below on that hallway. Uh, and so they can see that the room below is flooded underneath, and they see this floating in the water. <laughs> oh. The booger is dead. No. I don't even know what this is. Hello, how are you? I'm under the water. Please help me. You're too much. I hate all of you. I hate you all. <laughs> yeah. So, freaking Snively's dead, and oh my god, Wendy. Wendy is a killer? 
Well, here's what happened. Basically, Mike was, like, drowning Snipply because he has a fear of water. That is literally what happened. So, like, Wendy witnessed it, and he was like, oh, God, I'm going to get executed. So he chases Wendy down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and <laughs> when he chases Wendy down... Is this about Robbie Fox? Yeah, she gets executed. <laughs> she does. <don't. laughs> <laughs> she gets put in a wood chipper. <laughs> you can That's a fat owl. <laughs> Is it graphic? Well, it's uh, described in text. You can literally read it. But yeah, literally what happens is that like she hides in the smoking room afterwards, but like Mike tries breaking in. So like she like breaks the glass over him, so Mike freaking like dies from blood loss and he gets shoved against the wall. So Wendy runs out. But you know, she gets found out, obviously, and so and Wendy gets hilariously executed. Hilariously incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> so that's chapter three. This is chapter four, dudes. Um, and it's called and so here's the cast that we have surviving so far. Any predictions on who's gonna kick the bucket next? Okay. Pink haired bitch is going next. She has uh, pink haired bitch next to uh, Eggman. You want Eggman? <laughs> Green. All right. Um. So, anyways. Now for the motives. Uh, because this chapter is a double motive. It's the first double motive that Phantom Rapa has, and it's called the fan service motive because both things that happen are fan service related things. So, like, one thing is the truth serum, but, like, the truth serum isn't entirely accurate because people literally broadcast every single thought that happens in their heads. Uh, and the second motive happens a little bit later where everyone's species gets locked. So, like, Jolene gets turned into her stand, Freddy and Sam get turned into humans, Alphonse becomes a merman, stuff like that. Um, not a lot of things actually happen this chapter. Um, because we were approaching the end and activity was kind of like going down, which is why the cast size for the survivors is a little bit big. But like, VR and Jolene tried to like ambush Crunchy, but like Crunchy put like a fake hologram of themselves because Crunchy is actually a pit crew, but they didn't know that the motive actually affected Crunchy too. But like, um,. <laughs> Yeah, so, like, Pink Crew cut Crunchy, like, dumps a bucket of water on Robot VR and, like, runs away because they're, like, giggly and stuff like that, like a stupid 15-year-old. <laughs> but VR doesn't, like, get killed from this. He actually gets drunk from this happening because uh, he's, kind of, he's kind of a crappy robot. He kind of sucks at being a robot. <laughs> That's the best I can describe it as. Um Two new staff members get introduced because for the long time it was just the janitor and the security bot. But then there's like an arcade machine this chapter that got introduced in the arcade named Painmaker. He's always been there, but like people didn't notice that he was self aware. He was only revealed to be self aware because someone tried putting in cheat codes while playing his game, but like cheat codes hurt him. So he was like woken up from this. And then there's the, seam tr the seamstress because there was like a laundromat on the new floor. Although it doesn't really get used much. Um, what happens afterwards? <laughs> Haru dies. Um, she gets her face oh, bashed in like multiple times. So her skull is like kind of caved in right now. <laughs> so get a look Call at this them. delicious pink hair woman. She's dead. Um, and yes, the group is like I'm freaking sorry. out. Yeah. Like, Sam, like, is blaming both Alphonse and Jolene, because, like, Alphonse, like, is revealed as the traitor at this point, but, like, he was, like, an unwilling traitor, like, especially because, like, the archives, like, are, like, oh, yeah, there was, he was basically just bugged into doing it or whatever, because they literally, like, put a chip on him, and, uh, with Jolene, it was because, like, uh, she came out to Sam about being the person who gave Max the photo, and he was like, you killed my husband of 50 years, where <laughs> <laughs> Stop crying. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone knows that the alibis for them are too strong. And besides, Alphonse is a merman. Um, so there was literally only one person who can kill, and it was Itsuki. Um, Itsuki literally, basically, did not have a motive to like we. I I don't know what happened because like we discussed behind the scenes about like Painmaker like hurting her and it would like trigger like a, a response in her brain to go do it since she wasn't a human she was like a wooden creature 
But it didn't get mentioned in the trial. So it, it was kind of just like her crying for no reason. And then everyone just hugging this person that they don't know because she was a minor. And they're like, oh, no, we're executing a 13-year-old. <laughs> so, yeah, it's Suki dies. Um, goodbye, uh, Wasted or whatever. Whatever. This chapter was the one that got rid of the most inactive characters. Anyways, chapter five. Jenga, I am very proud of this chapter title, and it will be referenced again. I hope you know that. <laughs> um, Jenga Jong. Yes. So here's chapter five, the final chapter. Here's all the characters. What do you think? He didn't gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> I think VR's dying. <laughs> hmm. Guys, so. VR's gonna die. Yeah, so the motive is literally that Crunchy just leaves. Crunchy just dips. <laughs> and then, like, everything goes out of order because the power in the building shuts off. So they literally have to fend for themselves. <laughs> fucking leave. Yeah, and, like, the darkness of the, like, the place, like, triggers, like, the parasite in, in the janitor. So, like, the janitor pops up. And freaking like kills Peach. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the Peach is dead. Yeah. And uh freaking like all this, the can the group like hid in the freaking archive room to like learn more about the protag and anti stuff. And then they encounter Painmaker. In the freaking. No, I'm currently uh, on a call, Dylan. Dylan, go away. So, like, in the. Okay, like, bye. They play the game on Painmaker. Dylan, I'm not fucking BC, go away. Yeah, look at the water bottle. Okay. Go bye. Wait, no, 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 no. Get back. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Love you. Yes, alright. So, yeah, they play the Painmaker game, and it basically is Season Zero. Like, it's literally a video game version of Season Zero. Jonay plays as Monica. Um, and she basically describes like walking through the back rooms of this in like in like bodies and stuff like that or whatever the hell. She talks about how she was like she always knew she was like created for entertainment and how like the other characters were like revealed to them that they were and stuff like that. Um, and like up here, this is important because she mentions that the people behind this are like their consciousness, quote unquote. They've always been here. Um. And, like, afterwards, like, the, it, it reveals that this game was ended by the multiverse's timeline being reset. So everything was set back to, like, the very first days in the multiverse after this killing game. So, like, everyone in this killing game doesn't remember the killing game except for the survivors. Um, Dang. Yeah. So, like, the pro tag and the duro tag, they wander off from the group as the group, like, communicates on a, like, to Amori on their programs, on their, ta on their pig pads, because, you know, they hacked it. Uh, the detective was introduced, like, a bit ago, and he had, like, discussed with Sam and Jolay how, like, there are multiple masterminds involved. Uh, but Jolay, uh, she does not get any of this lore stuff. She, like, encounters Eggman. Who like <laughs> accidentally electrocutes her because she jump scares him while he's working on something? <laughs> um, yeah. So like, <gasps> damn, that's his freaking of him. Yeah. So like the group, like after Jolene like recovers, the group gets like sent to the observatory after Sam accidentally triggers a, a mechanism that causes the final trial to happen. Uh, and before like the trial starts, Jolene gets some stitches to like fix up that. Um, electrocution scar on her face and that starts the the protagonist scar trend basically um mm. yeah um so they get they they discuss like a bunch of things of like cgs that were discovered basically like dms discussions like color-based symbolism like pink being for like generally like negative association cyan for positive purple for like the protags and like the brown is associated by, with masterminds and junk like that um um, and, like, they like they recall all the interactions that they had with the narrators, because this is the only season where, like, the characters have been able to speak with the narrators and stuff like that. And so, <laughs> can you guess what the conclusion of the trial is? What? So, the masterminds are the role players. Um, 
And in this, <gasps> oh my god! Yeah. So in this chunk of the trial, literally, I I tell people, oh yeah, out of character talking can no longer happen. If you say something as yourself, the characters will hear it. So I literally, I literally host a character Q and A, and in this character Q and A, it is literally just us going, your lives have no meaning, right? To the characters. <laughs> 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 Literally, like, I meant, like, said something out of line, and I was like, Egg Man, you have two mothers. Egg <laughs> <laughs> Man, you have two mothers. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all this and, like, Jolay is just like, uh, you guys are talking BS, especially because, like, we were like, oh, yeah, we're gonna kill you now. And she talked about how, like, if, if this is all a fictional story, that us killing them off would be, like, a terrible way to end the story. And, like, then we were like, oh, yeah, well, that's not really how we're gonna end this story. What happens is what people decide happen to you. And with that, I punched a freaking uh, building, and the building starts collapsing. So... <laughs> <laughs> and that happens to one thing that everyone who like hasn't played Phantom Rapa in season one knows happened in season one. Can you guess? <laughs> is it? My fucking died. Yeah, I think. It that's is. my theory. <laughs> my god, right? The tail. The tail. I just. You have two mothers, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, it like literally said. dies because Sam shoves him over when the group's trying to escape the collapsing building. Like, if Sam hadn't had done this, literally so many things could have been solved with Eggman's expertise. I am not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> so like after this, like the build since the building's falling apart, the power blockers turn off so Jolne can use her stand now. So when they reach the bottom floor, she uses stone free to break open the door. Um and everyone uh isn't everyone left manages to escape the killing game, basically, even the staff. So like it's the staff and then it's the final survivors and they're all there, they all stare at like the collapsed building and they get into this like so, like, the tower of surrounding them, um, the place, the location around the tower was basically just a tourist trap town. Like, the tower was originally used as some sort of, like, major, like, tourist trap to make money. But, like, the place has been abandoned for a while. Um, and there's a bus there. Uh, so the entire group gets into the bus, and they, and Sam, like, drives the group away from the tower. And that's the end of Tower of Despair. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and so then they go to the mid story and then that's uh all for the story of the tower of the sphere cast so yeah glam vr is end game um crepe cookie probably took their bugs with them Alphonse is gonna get three boyfriends jolne is running around and telling her dad to off himself and then sam disappears up until last season <laughs> So just, just imagining Jolie and at her dad. You have to mother this girl. <laughs> so, so yeah. What do you guys think? Any questions mother. or whatever? I don't. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, um. Does Eggman actually have two mothers? Yeah. <laughs> he literally obtained two mothers after I said that to. Him. <laughs> and this is the 69th slide, so I thought it would be a good slide to end the presentation on. So, so yeah, that is season one. The entirety of Tower of Despair explained in slideshow format. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Amazing. That 10 out of 10, you pay. Honestly, we could have seen this with the other seasons. I am going to do this with the other seasons. Don't you worry. I like recorded it. I like recorded everything, okay? Yay. I can't wait to see season four. Season four is great. Make it stop! Make it stop! <laughs> that, is, that is season one. Yippee. Yep. <laughs> uh, I can't, and I and I hope you guys um 
Honestly, like, I'm gonna reveal this to, like, people, like, I'm going, yes, Junk, you will be able to help, but I'm going to, like, I'm going to make a YouTube series with season one, and I've got a help from a bunch of, like, dorks. <laughs> yes, Kuka, you can help. But, like, honestly, that's part of why I made this video, so that if people don't want to watch the entire goddamn YouTube series, or if they're too impatient to, or if they want to spoil it for other people in the comments, <laughs> then, like, that's what the video is. Evil. God, if you never do one of these for season five, can I, if you were guess, can I help? Uh, you know what, sure, I don't see why not. But, yeah, that is, that is season one, that is the, and that, con and that's, and that's, that leads from a decent season to one of the worst seasons Phantom Rumpa will ever have because of two idiots. <laughs> God, I'm scared. Should I be scared? But yeah, that's basically.